I help horse owners who want to become better people for their horses. That means they want to understand their horses better, they want to spend harmonious and fear-free time with their horses, and they want to become more confident in what they are doing. The tools that I'm using for that is centered riding, which helps a lot with really using images to understand your body better. I use lots of life coaching. I'm also a life coach and I use meditation and yoga techniques to really find out what it takes inside of us to really communicate with our horses in a better and deeper way. I've also been a horse lover and rider all my life and I've been trained in the German dressage system but I've also worked with French and Spanish dressage trainers. I see dressage as an art form more than what you usually see in sports and it's so beautiful to connect horse and rider to just be a become a better team in whatever they do, dressage or trail riding, whatever you do, you want to be safe, you want to be confident, you want to feel good, and you don't need an English saddle for that. So what the balance seat means is that you, first of all, you stay on, which I think is really important for all of us. So the foundation for a good and balanced seat is the pelvis position. So for that, I will place my hand on the back of her pelvis right here. And then Caroline, if you would like to put your hand on your abdomen just below your belly button. So when you think of the pelvis as a bowl-shaped structure, picture that bowl filled with water. You hollow the back a little bit, you will actually tip that um, bowl over a little bit to the front and all the water will spill out in the front. And then you can tip the pelvis back and the water will spill out in the back. So we want to get the pelvis in the neutral position. That's looking good. How does that feel? Nice. I feel like I'm connected. Like yes. The pelvis is really the center of your body and the place where you communicate with your horse from. Okay, for the next step, we want to um, see how the pelvis actually follows the horse's movement, the pelvis and the legs, because the more we are in the horse's movement, the better we are in sync and the more efficient our aids will be. So when we start walking and you just relax your pelvis and your legs and then you tell me what you what kind of movement you feel in your pelvis. Yeah, so I can feel my yeah, I can feel my legs going with his barrel as it's going back right. and forth. And yeah. then my pelvis my seat is also has a, a a motion that's going with his it's like left, right, left, right. Yes. Left, right. Yes, very good. Yeah. Now I want to use this for a transition to a stop. It's going to be really easy because now she feels his movement and they are really connected. Her pelvis, her center is connected to his movement of his hind legs. And so what I'm going to ask her is to then at one stage stop that movement, exhale and really drop her tailbone as if she were dropping an anchor from her, her tailbone and that might already make him stop. You really want to picture when you want to stop. You also have a clear intent what you're really doing. That means you're picturing what you have in mind, you, the next step that you want to take. And then you picture the stop, stopping of your pelvis. Super, perfect. So the more your intent is very clear, the less you actually need your aids, your legs, your reins, You've probably noticed when you want to work with your horse and you're either really anxious, you're fearful, you're stressed out, you're overly ambitious, all these kinds of things. Your horse will actually reflect that back to you. We're going to use that for personal development. I'll give you an example. So if you think of praising your horse, praising is so important because that will really encourage your horse to work with you. So how do you praise your horse? Do you really allow that wave of joy coming through you when you really feel your horse has done something really beautiful? That's my good boy. That's my good boy. Do you allow that to come through? Do you really allow the horse to feel that too? Do you use your voice? Do you feel your enthusiasm, your joy? If not, what's holding you back? Why is it not happening? Because when you're praising your horse, you're also praising yourself. You, you're a team, the two of you. So you're praising both of you. So what does it bring up for you? That might be holding you back to really feel that joy and really share that with your horse.